Hello, my name is Dr. Knott, and welcome to the announcement trailer for my new campaign of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. It begins August 29th. The first minute or so of this video will go through uh, how my campaign will be set up, and the last, I don't know, 20 minutes or however long this video is, uh, we will talk about the new gameplay features added to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. So that's what the bulk of this video is going to be about. New gameplay, uh, what does the expansion bring to XCOM 2's base game? That's the focus. Uh, just so you know, we're not going to focus on storyline, we're going to focus exclusively on gameplay. Alright, let's get into this. So, for my personal campaign, which begins August 29th, we're going to release an episode every day at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We're going to use all of the DLC, Shen's Last Gift, Alien Hunters, Anarchy's Children, and Resistance Warrior Pack. There'll be no mods, so no Long War 2 or anything like that. Difficulty, we're going to do the first campaign on Commander. Then, if there's enough, uh, you know, demand, I guess, we will do it on Legend. No tutorial and beginning voiceover will be reduced, but we will show subtitles and all of the cutscenes will be watched, all of the audio clips that do pop up will be heard. Uh, we essentially do not want to miss anything new, so this first playthrough is to just be fully immersed in War of the Chosen. So I must make a disclaimer, spoilers will be had in this video. Uh, you have been warned, but I will, like I said previously, focus this presentation on gameplay content, not storyline. Thus, key plot lines have been left out. Uh, I personally do not want to know about these, and I'm sure uh, you don't either. If you do, you can look them up. Um, also, there's a wealth of information released about this game. This presentation does not include everything, but instead most interesting pieces of information that I have found. You have been warned. Let's go. Alright, so most of my sources are from these listed here, mainly for Axis and XCOM sneak peek releases. Uh, there have been a lot of YouTube videos and Twitch VODs of demos and interviews I've watched. Uh, most of those, uh, at least where they don't have storyline stuff happening, XCOM 2 wiki page for uh, some filler stuff, and there have been a lot of interviews with Eurogamer, PC Gamer, PlayStation Blog, PC Games N, and GameSpot. So, overview, what's new in War of the Chosen? Alright, so according to Fraxis, a full campaign of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen is, quote, considerably longer in a full campaign of XCOM 2. So they're saying expect about 10 to 15 additional missions. So this should this should give you about 60 to 75 total missions to beat the game. There will be second wave options and available they'll, they'll be available upon completion of a campaign. And as far as I can tell, there's only one known second wave option which is you can choose which faction you meet first out of the three new factions, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, there were second wave options available for XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and Enemy Within, but not for the XCOM 2 base game, so this is new. And if you're curious, here is a complete list of second wave options that were unlockable in XCOM, Enemy Unknown, and Enemy Within. And um, interesting, I went back, uh, the original XCOM 2 base game had not created equally and hidden potential as uh, XCOM 2 base game settings until recently. I actually went about a week ago, because uh, I normally play with those two things turned on, not created equally and hidden potential, and as far as I can tell in the options they weren't uh, available as things to select, so they're probably going to be added as second wave options. As for any of these other ones listed here, feel free to look them up. Um, I don't know if these will be included in XCOM 2 or The Chosen, that'll be interesting. Um, also, there are 10 new achievements and one altered achievement. The new achievements are a new alliance, where you complete the Lost and Abandoned mission, which is a story mission that everyone will experience. Uh, arrival, arrival silenced, permanently defeat one of the Chosen. Zombies in a barrel, get 15 headshots against Lost in a single turn. Born in the Darkness, get 4 kills from Shadow Mode with a Ranger in a single mission. Circle of Psy, raise the Templar to maximum focus level, spend it all, and reach the max again in a single mission. Can't stop the fighting, perform these offensive actions, sorry, perform three offensive actions against the same target with a skirmisher in a single turn. It takes two, form a level three bond between two soldiers. Weary warriors, complete a mission with all tired soldiers and no casualties. Fully operational resistance, raise XCOM's influence, all three factions to high in a single game. 
no one left behind. Rescue a soldier who is captured by the Chosen, and the one altered achievement is exquisite timing. Beat the game on Commander Plus difficulty by July 1st or July 15th for War of the Chosen. Also, uh, Braxis has been working on a patch to ameliorate performance issues with XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, which is huge. I have to play this game on pretty low settings uh, to actually be able to record and, and, and to show things, so you'll, you'll notice that in my gameplay. It's not the crispest of uh, video quality, but, you know, the story is there, so it's cool. Alright, new factions and hero classes for XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Let's go through them one at a time. The first and the one with the most information is the Reaper. They are equipped with a vector rifle, which is essentially a sniper rifle, but you can move and shoot. Uh, the very lowest level of this uh, weapon, the vector rifle, has three ammo slots and does three to four base damage. They also, the Reapers, carry a claymore, which is an explosive uh, grenade type item. Uh, the lowest amount of damage it does is five. It can be tossed, it does not detonate until it's attacked, so you can throw it with the Reaper and then shoot it with the Reaper, or it can be shot by another XCOM soldier. And throwing the Claymore does not reveal the Reaper. It's got a special ability, Shadow. Uh, Reapers, this is a quote here, Reapers use an advanced form of concealment called Shadow, which only has a chance to break after taking actions. Actions, I think they mean attacks here, because you can move without there being a chance to break. Consecutive actions, attacks, increase the chance of being revealed. While in shadow, reapers have increased mobility, which is about 50%, and their enemies have smaller detection radii. This is from the Battlefield Briefing from game demos that I've watched. So, in-game quote. So, from a bunch of these VODs, Twitch VODs, and YouTube videos that were posted, I've been able to make a list of special abilities for each of the new factions. And so here is a uh, list, not of all the special abilities, just the ones that I've been able to find um, listed out. And if they're in quotes, I've been able to get the text from the game itself. So remote, remote start, corporal level ability, detonate an environmental explosive, causing it to deal double damage within twice its normal radius, does not reveal the Reaper. Blood trail, also corporal. Shot steal plus one damage if the target has been wounded this turn. Squad Sight, Corporal. You can target enemies within squad mate sight, provided there is a line of sight to the target. Homing Mine. Attach a claymore onto an enemy. Does not alert the enemy. The homing mine will explode upon that enemy taking damage. And that was the ability I was talking about before with the claymore. You can throw it, another XCOM soldier can shoot at it. Shadow. Grants the soldier Shadow, an advanced form of concealment where taking actions only has a chance to reveal the soldier. Um, there's a one turn cooldown from the previous shadow. So you start the mission on shadow, you can then get revealed, but on that turn that you're revealed you can't go into shadow again, you have to wait a turn. So that's the one turn cooldown. Other abilities, distraction, lieutenant. A kill with a claymore puts the reaper into shadow. Silent killer, lieutenant. Kills, the, kills with the vector rifle do not increase the reaper's chance to break out of shadow. Sting, Captain. Fire a shot while in shadow, guaranteed to remain in shadow. Banish. Fire at a target until you run out of ammo or it dies, reveals the Reaper. Soul Harvest. Kill shots increase crit chance by 5 to a maximum of 20. Target Definition. Any unit seen by a Reaper remains permanently visible. And Tactical Rigging gives the Reaper an extra utility slot because by default, they have no extra utility slots to carry their, uh, their weapon, the Vector Rifle, and the Claymore, and that's it. In their armor, they do not get another slot, so Tactical Rigging gives them one extra utility slot. Alright, next, the Skirmisher, they're equipped with a Cal-7 Bullpup. It's a light assault rifle. Ammo 3, base damage 3-4. to four. Aim significantly decreases with range and can fire twice per turn on both actions. So you can actually move on the first turn and fire, or fire on the first, sorry, move on the first action and fire with the second, or fire with the first action, move with the second, or fire both times. You have flexibility with the skirmisher. They also have a gauntlet with a ripjack and grappling hook, which you can see on the skirmisher's right arm in the image there. The ripjack is a melee weapon. The grappling hook is a free action. 
the grappling hook can pull enemies uh, towards the skirmisher. You can also launch yourself towards the enemies with the grappling hook and can develop shock attacks, which I believe are EMP attacks that do more damage against robotics. Special abilities with the skirmisher, Justice. Use the grapple to pull a humanoid target to you and deliver a ripjack strike. Wrath. Use the grapple to pull yourself to an enemy and deliver, deliver a ripjack strike. So those are the two abilities I was just talking about. You can launch yourself at the enemy, you can pull the enemy towards you. Battle Lord. The Skirmisher may assign this ability to any soldier. The soldier can take a single action after each enemy action. It doesn't say if it's limited to one turn, but I'm assuming it is. That would be uber strong if you could do it for the rest of the mission. Whiplash. Attack an enemy with an electrical lash. This attack does not cost an action. Manual Override. Lower all ability cooldowns by one. More special abilities. Reflex. Corporal. When fired upon, gain one extra action on the next turn. Interrupt. Captain. A powerful form of overwatch. Instead of firing automatically, perform any single action. Waylay. Major. When entering overwatch, you can take as many shots as you have remaining actions. Zero in. Subsequent shots on the same turn provide plus 10 critical chance. If against the same target, they also provide plus 10 hit chance. Full throttle. Gain plus two mobility with every kill this turn. Retribution. So this one is similar to Bladestorm. The Skirmisher can take a melee attack whenever an enemy enters melee range, which uh, appears to be an adjacent tile. So Skirmishers are similar to Rangers in that respect. And finally, the Templar equipment. They have a Psy Blade, which is a psionic sword. Base damage, I'm not sure. Extra action after a successful melee attack. So they can run in hit an enemy, and move back. They also carry a pistol. Ammo, of course, is unlimited. Base damage, I'm not sure. Probably two. Uh, and they obviously use psionic abilities. Just look at that purpley guy over there. His veins pumping out of his arms. Focus. So they have a special weapon, ability, uh, psionic power, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they acquire focus or psionic energy with each kill, or as a loot drop, but this require, requires the channel ability. Focus may be spent for temporary stat boosts. You can increase mobility, increase, increase defense, increase attacks, which is you know damage output, or deflect, not reflect attacks. Reflect is something, a different thing, a special ability they have, which we'll talk about in a moment. Special abilities for the Templar. Volt. Psionic attack that deals low damage, but jumps to nearby units at higher focus levels. Cost one focus. So with Volt, with one focus, you can use, you can hit one enemy. If you have two focus, you can hit two enemies. The Volt will, will jump to a nearby unit. And of course, three focus, three enemies. Ghost. Summon a duplicate Templar from the fallen body of a humanoid enemy. Cost two focus. Rend. Melee attack with the chance to stun or disorient the target. Cannot miss. Triggers momentum and generates focus on kills. Parry. Parry the next attack made against you during the enemy turn, preventing all damage. Arc Wave. Rend generates a wave of psionic energy in the direction of the attack. Damage increases with focus level. So I've seen in some of the gameplays that uh, people use Rend, Parry, or Rend and Arc Wave kind of in conjunction because. Uh, rend triggers momentum, which basically gives you an extra action, and then you can parry so that the next attack misses. Instead of running away, you parry, so you're still right next to the enemy on the next turn. So that'll be interesting to see how those how those work together, these special abilities. How you can combine multiple abilities, the chain attacks, and even defense in the, in the form of parry. Pillar. Summon a pillar of psionic energy to act as a high cover point. Cost one focus. Ionic Storm. Summon lightning to strike all nearby enemies. Damage increases with focus level. Costs all focus, but generates focus on kills. So you can generate one focus for every kill. So if you can use Ionic Storm and you have three focus, it'll use all three, but if you can kill three enemies, you get the three back. Reflect. When the Templar has two or more focus, there is a chance to reflect incoming shots back at the attacker, completely avoiding the damage. This is a passive effect, you don't have to activate it, 
As long as you have this ability, there's a chance that you will reflect the attack as long as you have two focus in your focus slots. Exchange. Exchange locations with a squad mate costs one focus. Invert. Switch locations with an enemy unit costs one focus. Sun Stun Strike. Strike an enemy with psionic force, knocking them back in the direction of the attack costs one focus. Channel. When an enemy dies, you may leave behind psionic energy the Templar can collect to raise their focus level. So that's what I was talking about on the previous slide. When you kill an enemy, instead of like having a loot drop with items, sometimes they'll leave behind psionic energy that the Templar can go and pick up if they have the channel ability. So heroes from new factions will be balanced with XCOM soldiers and enemies. They do not level up similarly to XCOM soldiers. And, of course, the new factions hate each other. That's a little bit of storyline, but you find that all over the place, so I felt like that's okay to put it. The Chosen. So who are the Chosen? This is, of course, War of the Chosen expansion. So who are these three Chosen? Let's take a look. The chosen will be fought multiple times throughout the campaign. They will even remember what happened in previous battles or missions and reference them through warnings and or taunts in later missions. So if you do something great against them, or in their point of view, uh, bad, they will come back and mention it. Um, if you lose or something, they'll come back and taunt you in a later mission, that kind of thing. During battle, they can appear on the other side of the map and attack from an out-of-range position. You'll be given advanced warning of unseen incoming attacks. Not sure how that works, haven't seen any gameplay with that. Mostly, you'll see that that has to do with the Hunter. We'll talk about that in a little bit. In general, the Chosen are interested in acquiring knowledge. Their primary objective may not be to kill XCOM soldiers, but instead to daze and interrogate. So the soldier will remain on the field and be dazed and then interrogated. Or they will capture the soldier. The Chosen acquire knowledge through these techniques. Knowledge allows the Chosen to accomplish more on the strategy layer and, if they gather enough knowledge, they can attack the Avenger. If this attack succeeds, and supposedly it is a very difficult mission, it may be damaging enough to end the campaign. So, here is an example from a live stream with Jake Solomon and Garth DeAngelis of the three Chosen and what kinds of information you can be given so in this playthrough, they have defeated the Assassin, and they have the Warlock and the Hunter that they still have to do. And you can see that they have different knowledge levels, each of the Chosen is at a different knowledge level. In this case, the Assassin is defeated. The Warlock is at a new knowledge level of Collector, and the Hunter almost has full knowledge level. And each one has a planned activity. In this case, the Warlock is training, intense training, increasing their strength in combat, and the Hunter is doing Retribution, a brutal crackdown on the Resistance, permanently lowering XCOM's income. So, this will happen at the end of each month, you will see the status of what the Three Chosen are doing, but, you know, we should probably meet the Three Chosen. Each month, XCOM will be briefed on the objective, or objectives, of all Chosen met in the campaign up to that point. Objectives include training, like we saw, sabotage, or plotting to attack the Avenger in the worst case scenario. Each Chosen has a collection of strengths and weaknesses, and here are a few examples that I found watching Twitch VODs and, and playthroughs. Blast Shield, immune to explosions. Shadow Step, this Chosen does not trigger Overwatch or Reaction Fire. Regeneration, regenerates lost health. Shogun, can summon Advent Stun Lancers. Beastmaster can summon Savage Allies. The Savage Allies are your Chrysalids, your Faceless, your Muton type enemies. All Seeing reveals concealed units. Low profile. Defense increased after the first attack of every turn. Planewalker. Chosen will teleport after taking damage. Some weaknesses. Groundling. Easy to target from high ground. Adversary, Reapers, Skirmishers, or Templars. So what you'll see is, they'll say Adversary and then one of the new factions. So that Chosen will take increased damage from the specific faction. So if it says Adversary, Skirmishers, the Chosen will be weak against Skirmishers and take more damage from Skirmishers than XCOM Soldiers, Reapers, or Templars. Bewildered, takes additional damage from more than three attacks on a single turn. 
Shell-shocked, this Chosen takes increased damage from explosions. And brittle, takes increased damage from close-range attacks. It is not a requirement to eliminate the three Chosen. The Assassin, the Hunter, and the Warlock before the final mission. However, if any are still alive, the final mission will include following tidbits. All Chosen will have max HP. All Chosen will be equipped with optimal weapons at the highest level they can possibly reach, and all surviving Chosen will appear in the final mission at the same time, which sounds exceptionally difficult. As a bonus, XCOM will be able to research any deceased Chosen's weapons. The Chosen's weapons are, without a doubt, the most powerful weapons in the game. Let's meet the Chosen finally, the Assassin. It's equipped with a katana and arashi. The katana is the sword, arashi is the gun. In one of the playthroughs, I saw the Assassin use a smoke grenade. It utilizes stealth and invisibility as her primary uh, transport method, if you will. So, on the battlefield, she will become invisible and then just pop out of nowhere and attack. And of course, can use psionics. The Warlock relies also on psionic abilities. In one of the playthroughs, the Warlock mind controlled an XCOM soldier. Can summon psionic beings and is equipped with a rifle, but mostly relies on those psionics. And the Hunter, equipped with a sniper rifle, the Dark Lance, and a pistol, the Dark Claw has uber squad sight ability to fire dark lands from exceptionally long range. This is the one where you won't even see it, it'll be on the other side of the map, and it can fire at you. And also day soldiers may even respawn if killed on the battlefield. So one of the playthroughs, the uh, actually in the XCOM trailer, XCOM 2 or the chosen trailer, the hunter says this, Thanks to the Elder's gifts, I have lived a hundred lives, Commander. And at this rate, I'll live a hundred more before they are done with me. He says as he respawns immediately after being quote unquote killed by XCOM soldiers. New alien and advent threats. Advent purifier, equipped with flamethrower and an incendiary grenade. Purifier pack may explode when killed, so don't attack it with close range attacks basically. And it's immune to fire, of course, because as you can see in the picture, it's just spewing fire all over the place. Advent Priest, equipped with magnetic rifles, able to use psionics. The new old ability, Holy Warrior Mind Merge, so it can mind merge. Um, merge mines with a target, granting the target plus 25% critical chance and plus one health. This is an in-game description of Mind Merge from XCOM Enemy Unknown. Just like in XCOM Enemy Unknown, if the Priest is killed when they are using Holy Warrior, the unit they control is killed as well. So, other abilities that they can use, Mind Control, Stasis, and they have an ability that they can spare themselves from being killed on a turn from a lethal attack. And the Spectre, is it organic or robotic? Well, in the description, it's newly discovered humanoid alien, sounds like organic, known to transform into a black nanorobotic cloud. Sounds robotic, so it sounds like maybe blue screen rounds will be you know, useful against them when they're in their robotic stage and not so much when they're in their organic stage. New ability, Vanish plus Lightning Reflexes. It transforms into a black cloud that cannot be hit on the first Overwatch shot. It also has a new ability, Shadow Bind. Make an enemy copy of an ally soldier with the exact stats of the ally soldier. So the enemy will know all of the same abilities, will have the same HP, same defense, same aim, everything. Ally soldier is knocked out for the duration that Shadow Bind is in effect. And all, atta all attacks from the enemy copy render other ally soldiers unconscious, which is insane. That's that's so get rid of that uh, shadow bound copy ASAP. Also has a new ability horror, an attack that also heals the Spectre. Of course, not not your soldiers, the Spectre. The Lost. Oh, the Lost. A lot of, a lot has been said about the Lost on the battlefield. There's a new technique, if you call it that, that you can use called headshot. If a lost unit is killed with an attack action, the soldier, your XCOM soldier, or your new faction soldier, will gain an additional action. So you can chain headshots, but you have to kill the lost with each shot. The lost do not use cover. They are attracted by, uh, by loud noises, like explosions and breaking glass, and will appear a few turns after they hear the sounds if the lost are on that mission. 
They're easy to hit, kind of like uh, Psy Zombies. They have high hit percentage against them. And not all, uh, they're not allies with Adventure Aliens. So that when the Lost appear, they are just as likely to attack you as they are to attack Advent or Aliens, including the Chosen. Three kinds of Lost. There are the Normies. Slow, zombie-like, and relentless, typical Lost that appear in most of the missions. They also have Dashers, which are quick with greater mobility, a la 28 Days Later, you know, those sprinting zombies. And the Brutes, they're the large, tank-like zombies, take more damage than other Lost. So, one concern with all these enemies is the balance. The health and stats of late-game enemies will be slightly increased because this should balance with the additional power given to XCOM with the new faction heroes, XCOM soldier bonds, which we'll talk in a little bit, and the new abilities that come with all these new soldiers. So, War of the Chosen really does pump up the power given to XCOM in terms of abilities, in terms of options, uh, with a lot of other strategy layer enhancements that we'll talk about in a little bit. And so, you know, the enemies need to be balanced too, or else this will be a walk in the park. So that's what's been done. All right, new environments and mission objectives, enhanced strategy layer, greater customization, and replayability. This is where the bulk of the information uh, happens in this presentation. So let's get into it. A lot of text, a lot of numbers. Here we go. Hope you're having fun. Let's keep it going. New environments. We got rundown cities that never got the alien makeover after the initial alien invasion from XCOM Enemy Unknown. So basically, we get to go back to those original cities. These cities appear abandoned, but they are not. Missions in these cities typically require completion of an objective and soldier extraction before you get overrun by the loss. So these are the original cities, all those green smoky pods that were launched in the um, in the opening cinematic of XCOM Enemy Unknown. Yeah, we're going back to those locations. And we're going to fight the lost while we're there. Underground tunnels is another new environment. Xenoformed wilderness regions. New artwork and parcels within maps, so even maps that were in XCOM 2, there are new parcels, including the bar from XCOM Enemy Unknown, the iconic bar. Looked like in some playthroughs there were also new gas station parcels and, um, you know, some cool, cool parcels that were added to the maps that we're so used to in XCOM 2, and just brand new maps. And of course, the Chosen Strongholds, which we'll talk about later. So there are new missions. In the new missions, we have newer objectives that were not seen in XCOM 2. We've got rescue missions, we've got sit reps, we've got dark events, and we've got covert actions. And you will see, um, I've taken in some of these slides just information straight from the XCOM 2 website, and I'll reference it when we get to those slides. So we're gonna go through each one of these and talk about what information I found. New objectives. So, two examples of new objectives that I've seen in some playthroughs. Locate and kill the Advent Field Commander. Sometimes there will be a special Advent Officer or Field Commander that you'll have to find and destroy them before you can finish the mission. There's also Supply Extraction. So, in one of the missions I watched, uh, basically there are 12 total um, briefcases or pods, or whatever you want to call them, that, that you're trying to launch before XCOM gets to them. And so on the map, you have 12 locations you have to get to and trigger while you're fighting Advent, maybe aliens, and maybe the lost, and maybe a chosen. And it's very similar, if you will, uh, to the resistance havens, where you're trying to save maybe like 12, uh, 12 civilians. But in this case, you're trying to get to 12 data points and have them extract, have XCOM be able to extract them from the map before Advent gets to them, and you know, the more you get, the better. Rescue missions. Soldiers captured by the Chosen may be rescued in a special mission. Intel will be needed uh, to be spent to start the rescue operation. There are also sit reps. What's a sit rep? It's a new feature that alters the gameplay of a normal mission triggered at random, and adds a modifier to the mission. So some examples of sit reps that may be triggered, you may have an, a normal rescue mission or a normal, uh, you know, guerrilla ops, and boom, a sit rep is triggered. So what kinds of sit reps can be triggered? Soldier limit, three. 
So these, if you're only limited to three soldiers on a mission, it'll be balanced to make the objective achievable, of course. Another sit rep environment is littered with explosives. There's also Shadow Squad. All soldiers may reconceal. Most likely once, I'm assuming. There's also a sit rep called The Lost. XCOM battles a swarm of The Lost. There's The Horde. XCOM battles a horde, which every horde is twice the number of Lost as a swarm. So in total, you'll have twice the number of Lost in The Horde sit rep than you will in The Lost sit rep. And there's a sit rep called Savage. Beast enemies appear on mission, so all of a sudden chrysalids are popping out and faceless are coming out of places. There are about 10 to 12 different sit reps total, and of course right here I've only showed you six, so there are four to six more. Dark events. You can have up to four dark events at once, so you'll have your three normal ones happening that were in, the, in like XCOM 2, the base game, and then there's the option of having one more from the Chosen. And one specific dark event that was leaked uh, by the XCOM and Fraxis teams. It's called Lost World. A single swarm of Lost will show up on every mission for one entire month. It sounds pleasant. All right. Now, XCOM 2 War of the Chosen's covert actions and a whole new strategy layer briefing from XCOM News posted on the XCOM website on August 10th, 2017. Next few slides, you'll see there's a slightly different font it's taken from this information. Let's go through it together. Briefing on covert actions. The factions. We've already talked about each of the three new factions, Templars, Skirmishers, and Reapers, they will be recruiting in the fight against the Chosen. Finding a new faction opens up their headquarters, so you'll see that on the Geoscape map, which gives you a new place to scan and benefit from in the strategic level. For example, scanning at the Reapers headquarters gives you additional intel. Operating from the Templar HQ heals your troops quicker, and the Skirmishers HQ allows you to build facilities faster. So they're typical benefits, but you can do them across the globe instead of your own headquarters. Working with each faction on covert actions is the key to defeating the Chosen once and for all. The more missions you undertake for a faction, the better your influence is with them. The better your influence, the more covert actions will be available. More resistance orders become available, and you'll be able to assign more resistance orders per mission. So we're going to go through what's a covert action, what are resistance orders. Here we go. Resistance ring covert actions. These are essentially non-combat missions. You're allocating resources and soldiers to ferret out information, seek out perks that'll benefit XCOM, or rescue captured soldiers. A successful covert action can mean additional resources, new soldiers, new mission, or information leading to a chosen stronghold. Once players successfully complete three covert actions to locate and gain intel on a stronghold, that chosen's final mission will be available. But don't think that this is simply a matter of choosing a mission and waiting for timers to tick down. So the Resistance Ring is a new building that you can, uh, a new room you can build in the Avenger. And covert actions, like they said, non-combat missions, but you have to give resources and sometimes, you know, soldiers can still get in injured on covert actions. You're just not going out and fighting in the turn-based strategy that you typically do on missions. So covert actions can and will go sideways. Each mission has a chance of seeing your soldiers get wounded. Worse, a mission could devolve into an ambush. When this happens, the game immediately changes focus from the Avenger to the soldiers deployed on the covert action. The player has to move the soldiers to an extraction zone and safely get them out of the ambush. The odds, however, are stacked against you. Of course they are. You won't have a full squad, usually two, maybe three soldiers and you'll be fighting off enemies as well as advent reinforcements. That sounds intense. So, not typically strategy mission like you do turn-based strategy like all the other missions, but if there's an ambush, boom, all of a sudden you're in there. So, yeah. Intel, examples of covert actions. Some of the missions you may undertake in our fight against advent. So hunt the chosen, three separate missions that will lead you to a chosen stronghold. So each chosen has three separate missions. When you complete those three missions, you get to find out where the chosen stronghold is, which will trigger the final mission for defeating that chosen once and for all. Rescue soldier, only available after a soldier has been captured by the chosen. So what you'll need to do is trigger this covert action once it's researched or whatever. Once it's done completely, you can then go on the mission to rescue your soldier. Locate faction, always available at the start of the game, used to meet the factions and gain one of their soldiers. 
That sounds great. So that's how you meet the factions through covert actions. Recruit faction soldier. Counter chosen activity. Prevents the chosen from performing their scheduled monthly activity. Breakthrough research. Activates one of the new breakthrough research techs. And resistance order. Gives the player another resistance order card for the faction. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So here's an example of what a covert action screen looks like. So if we go through it, just we're just going to go through from left to right. Uh, you have available operations, three from the Reapers, one from the Templars. It looks like they haven't met the Skirmishers yet, that's what I'm, what, what I'm taking from here. If you look in the middle, they've highlighted uh, locate faction for the Templars. Find the Templars. From what, we now, uh, from what we know of them, the Templars have relied on their psionic powers to keep themselves hidden from Advent's prying eyes. They won't be easy to find. If we send in a small team to explain what we're trying to do, maybe they'll see the light. So reward is a faction hero. Add a faction hero to XCOM's ranks and gain new resistance orders and covert actions. Duration, 8 days. So it looks like what you'll need to do is required a soldier that's at sergeant level or higher, rank or higher, and the soldier reward is a promotion, and then another soldier is required. So right now, Templars, Teachers of the Abyss. Ooh. Influence with them right now is low. You haven't even met them in this in this playthrough that we're looking at. So of course it'll be low. And you can get that up to high. And that's what you want to do. So, looks like in this campaign the Templars are located in, in New Chile and it takes eight days to meet them. Of course, there are ways to mitigate risk. When setting up a covert action, you will sometimes be able to add additional soldiers and staff, scientists and engineers improve the odds of mission success, or you'll be able to employ resistance orders. So what are resistance orders? Think of resistance orders as modifier cards used in CCGs, collectible card games. According to XCOM 2 senior producer Garth DeAngelis, design leveraged the foundation of a tried and true card system to provide that variability from a mechanical standpoint. These factions are unpredictable, just like the game itself and you never know what services they can offer in a given playthrough. In addition, the gameplay depth. Unique narrative context was given to each of the new factions based on those services. The accurate reapers may allow your squad to insta-kill lost if you hit them at all, while the skirmishers may strong-arm the black market into offering you more favorable deals. It's your choice to take advantage of what you want. So examples of resistance orders for each of the three factions. We have two examples here. For the Reaper, you have Infiltrate. On time missions, the timer does not begin until the squad has lost concealment. Volunteer Army. There is a chance that a resistance soldier will join the XCOM squad for the duration of the mission. Skirmisher. Bomb Squad. Experimental grenade and heavy weapon projects are completed instantly in the Proving Grounds. Modular Construction. Facility construction speed is increased by 25%. And with the Templar, mental fortitude. All battle madness, panic, obsession, berserk, shattered, only lasts one turn. Machine learning. Research breakthroughs are twice as likely to occur. So here is an example from livestream with Jake Solomon and Garth DeAngelis of what these resistance orders look like on the page. So you have two options from each. Uh, well, actually, technically, you have two options with the Reapers and the Templars because your influence with them in this case is high. You have one option with the Skirmishers because your influence is medium. And then you have two wildcard orders on the far left. And down on the bottom, it shows you the available orders. I'm not going to read through every single one. You can pause this and take a look. They're pretty cool. Uh, and there's a lot of strategy involved here. Uh, and you can really you know, change how your playthrough is going by picking out these resistance orders strategically. Alright, so covert actions and influence points. Each faction hates a specific chosen. XCOM gains influence points with the faction if they attack the chosen, they specifically fight. So, if the Reapers hate the assassin, then by fighting the assassin, you gain influence points with the Reapers. Influence points can be used to take covert actions with a faction and eventually a special covert operation will trigger and, this, if successful, the faction will send a hero to fight for XCOM. It's very difficult, it is possible, but difficult to get more than one hero per faction. Each chosen can be defeated through a completion of three covert actions and a final battle. 
Final battle for each chosen will be an XCOM enemy unknown type mission where you must endure a massive map with segmented areas through each chosen stronghold. Jake Solomon likens this mission type to a quote, dungeon crawler, where you have multiple avenues to take through the stronghold. The chosen will then be fought multiple times in their sanctum. Defeating each chosen in their home setting yields a access to research their weapons. You can only attempt each chosen stronghold mission once. And so here's an example. Uh, these guys on their live stream are going to the Chosen Assassin Stronghold, located in Canada. And the objective is, of course, to assault the Chosen Stronghold. And with the Shadow Chamber, they can see there are 14 enemies detected, plus the Chosen. Alright, this is Briefing on Soldier Bonds, another big addition to War of the Chosen. From how soldiers in XCOM 2 War of the Chosen form bonds, Learn new skills, XCOM News, posted August 9th, 2017. How soldiers learn or earn bonds. Each soldier has a compatibility level with each other. The higher the compatibility, the more likely they are to bond while on missions together. But there are also incidents that can occur, mid-mission, which can boost a soldier's compatibility. Whether one soldier rescues an unconscious squaddy from the battlefield, or if more than half the squad is lost, the survivors bond. In watershed moments like these, two soldiers' compatibility will shoot up. When two soldiers are ready to bond, you will see them on the Avenger getting a drink together, practicing at the range as pals, and more. Once two soldiers have bonded, neither soldier can bond with anyone else unless their bondmate dies. Till death do us part. If a soldier's bondmate dies, the survivor might not take it well and fly off in a berserk rage and suffer penalties they will recover and eventually be able to bond again. So besides personalizing your in-game experience, there are some inherent benefits to sending bonded soldiers on a mission together. And here are the soldier bond levels, 1 through 3 and the benefits they can get. So two soldiers with a bond level 1 get an ability called teamwork, grant an additional action point to a bondmate. So between the two of them they can use this once. Soldier bond level 2, spotter. The soldier is granted a bonus to aim when their bondmate has attacked or been attacked by the soldier's target. An extra bonus is granted if the bondmate is adjacent. Stand by me. When the soldier ends a move adjacent to their bondmate, the other soldier will automatically be cleansed of any negative mental effects. And covert operators. When deployed on a covert action together, the duration is reduced by one day. And soldier bond level 3. Advanced teamwork. Grants an additional action point to a bondmate, and dual strike, a combined standard shot attack by the soldier and their bondmate. So these will show up as like abilities down on the list of options that you have for each sol uh, soldier when both bondmates are on the same mission. Bonds are chosen or started in the living quarters. This initiates the level 1 bond and brings the player to the photo booth. And unfortunately, sparks cannot develop bonds, they are just machines. They have no feelings. So this is a little snapshot of a bond. Uh, bond level one reached uh, from the live stream with Jake Solomon and Garth DeAngelis. Jake Solomon and Jamie Lawrence are now bonded level one. Oh, nice. Whether or not your soldiers are bonded, though, they will need to rest. The more missions you send a soldier on without a break will start to take a toll. Exhaustion and stress, as well as bad encounters in the field, could lower a soldier's will and develop negative traits. This can include a fear of certain types of enemies. For example, after a fight against mutons that ended poorly, a soldier might panic when they see mutons again. It could lead a soldier to constantly reloading a weapon on their second action, a nervous tick, instead of listening to your orders. That's called obsessive. These negative traits can be cured by setting a soldier to heal in the infirmary. The infirmary is another... Uh, spot that you can build in the adventure, another room, and that will be where you can heal these negative traits. Needing to rotate your squad makeup between missions does come with a couple benefits as well. You'll have to make some interesting choices while selecting who deploys. The other notable perk is that your entire roster will benefit from being more evenly powered. A green will bar is displayed below each soldier on the battlefield. Will is decreased throughout the mission, so the longer the mission, the more will is lost. Soldiers will need to restore their will, which is what we talked about in the R and R slide previously. So another negative trait that uh, was found 
was shown during a playthrough, overly aggressive. This unit may take a shot immediately after going on overwatch. So instead of waiting for an enemy to move, you just stick them on overwatch, boom, they shoot while the enemy's in cover. You know, worst chance to hit. Not the, not, not, not the best, not the best thing to have, so a few negative traits could make things interesting. New soldier ability points and the training center. The training center replacing the advanced warfare center from the base game is an essential facility that XCOM can build. Not only is the training center there to enhance soldier bonds in War of the Chosen, this is where you'll spend ability points earned in combat to buy additional skills and abilities for the regular XCOM troops. According to senior producer Garth DeAngelis, the design team wanted to offer a new way of soldier leveling with War of the Chosen. Quote, since XCOM Enemy Unknown, progression has been a binary choice. Which of these two skills do I want? Says Garth. Quote, this was an opportunity to allow more meaning to squad capacity overall. Will I dump most of my ability points into a promising hybrid XCOM recruit through the training center, or save those points for a balanced approach across multiple units? The AP system is also far more comprehensive by being a direct result of smart decisions by the player. You earn AP by pulling off maneuvers like flanking and taking shots from height. Gaining a resource from intelligent combat play gives progression an entirely new feel. This also allows the player to execute on a non-linear approach for specking out faction heroes, since the tree now offers more than two choices at once. You can rush for the later abilities, or go for breath and grab a number of low-cost abilities up front. So here's an example for a specialist, and you can take a look. Colonel Duncan Rift McGregor has multiple options at his ranks, from squatty to colonel. So, this also impacts the original XCOM soldier classes. Take the specialist, for example. With ability points, you can select previously pass on abilities from either the battle medic or combat hacker skill paths, or you can opt for a third path made up of abilities from other XCOM soldier classes. The assortment of available abilities is random for every individual soldier. Only a few of these abilities show up for each soldier. Essentially, every soldier class gets more powerful in XCOM 2 or the Chosen, and we want you to have more of them in your ranks. And then, of course, are the even more powerful faction heroes joining the cause. Chosen are going to be in for one hell of a fight. So, a little more on the ability points. Each soldier gains AP and has a Combat Intelligence Modifier, CIM which is randomly generated when each soldier is recruited. Soldiers with the highest possible CIM are labeled savants. This has a 1 in 1000 or 0.1% chance of happening, so pretty unlikely. AP can be acquired through skill events when smart tactical decisions are made in battle. Not a guarantee, uh, but this is what the previous slide was talking about. Example skill events. XCOM gained one ability point from an ambush kill. XCOM gained one ability point from a height advantage shot. XCOM gained 5 ability points by killing a Chosen. These things will be triggered, you make smart tactical battle decisions, and boom. You get ability points that you can spend to upgrade your soldiers. There's also some new things on research. Two new systems that randomly trigger after you research a technology. Breakthrough is a bonus earned if you are willing to research this technology immediately. And Inspiration, a certain technology may be easier to research aka require less time, if you research this technology immediately. So both Breakthrough and Inspiration are, you have to do them immediately, but you get uh, quicker research and you have to make the decision on the spot. Do you want to go do a Breakthrough or Inspiration or do you want to you know, follow what you've been doing before and follow the, the predetermined path that you had in mind. I want to get A, B, and C done, but boom, after you do A, you know, E is now available. What are you going to do? So, also another piece of information is how does War of the Chosen update other XCOM DLC? And the biggest one that I've read about is how it alters Alien Hunters. Now with War of the Chosen, Alien Rulers do not get to take an action when you reload or take any actions out of a ruler's line of sight. They still will take actions if you shoot at them, they get an action after each action you take that affects them directly like being attacked, but if you reload, they don't take an action. If you run out of sight and do some stuff, they don't take an action. Each alien ruler is now assigned to a facility. 
They will only start appearing randomly in missions once each respective facility mission is attempted. And you'll see this on the Geoscape. You'll see that there's an alien ruler assigned to the Advent or alien facility. Once you go fight them in that facility, if you don't defeat them on that mission, they will start appearing in random guerrilla ops and other missions. But until that point, they're confined to that facility. Alright, XCOM 2 War of the Chosen Challenge Mode. What is this, and why should you care? Missions... So, oh, first off, Challenge Mode is a new... Uh, maybe daily or weekly, we're not quite sure yet, uh, missions that are either created by Fraxis or procedurally generated. There are missions that are that include a 30, t 30 minute time limit, and you get one chance to beat it. You get points after each kill, and compete with other players on a shared leaderboard. So it's basically like a daily or weekly challenge, and the mission is the same for everybody that attempts it. And you have a predetermined squad, not your own soldiers, and the squad may be a mixture of XCOM soldiers, aliens, and advent. And there's a way to keep score, whether through kills, points from kills, stuff like that. And you compete against other people on a leaderboard. Missions may sometimes be ridiculous, according to Jake Solomon, an example he shared on a Twitch stream. Quote, it was all expansion pack soldiers, but it was all codices. You are fighting all codices. And it was impossible. I didn't even beat it. Uh, Firaxis and XCOM will, the XCOM team, provide updates with information as to how you compare with others on the leaderboard as you progress through the challenge, and new challenges will be available at a currently unknown frequency. So we don't know how often it's going to be a daily challenge, it's going to be a weekly challenge, bi-weekly, you know. Not quite sure yet, but this sounds pretty cool, and of course, competing against everyone else that plays XCOM 2 or The Chosen will be a lot of fun. Now, share the resistance. Photo booth, uh, this has been a very popular thing, especially with the XCOM and Fraxis teams on Twitter, showing photo booth pictures. So a photo is taken of the surviving XCOM soldiers who strike random poses or you can fix them at the end of each mission. Photos can be taken back at base as well in the photo booth. These photos are highly customizable and can be saved as high resolution JPEG images. Unique poses will be available to soldiers that form bonds. These photos are used as XCOM propaganda and will start appearing in the battlefield, such as on the side of buildings. Photos will also appear around the adventure, like in the bar memorial room. And of course, Bradford, Shen, and Tygen can't stay quiet. They make, make a comment after a photo is taken after a mission. For example, Tygen says, If anything, I fear we're making it easier for them to catalog our people. There's also some in-game media. There's the Resistance Radio, a pro XCOM DJ will discuss XCOM's victories and defeats on the Avenger Radio. And you can hear that uh, typically in the bar memorial room. And then there's also Advent News, a pro Advent television channel will create stories to cover up XCOM's successful missions. Propaganda on both sides. And of course, XCOM 2 or The Chosen will have brand new openings that end cinematics. But that's storyline stuff, so we're not going to talk about it. So, essentially, once again, the new campaign begins August 29th. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you then. You know, check out the new campaign. It'll be a ton of fun. And after this first playthrough of Commander, maybe we'll try Legend difficulty. All right, and if you're going to do your own campaign, let me know. And of course, as Bradford always says, Good luck, Commander.